Very cold today, had to defrost the van, there's fog. It's a typical British middle of January. Pete is just marking up now for where our lining is gonna go and our architrave, so then that will define then when we set our stud wall across here. You literally have to remove your skin to remove this stuff. Use some gloves, protect yourself. You will definitely thank me later. So what we're going to do down here is there's going to be stud work across here all the way across to this point. There are going to be some doors here at a later date but we're going to build the stud work in here for now and then we can trim out what we need to for the doors later. There's going to be a sliding door which will go in here and then basically this will all be fully blanketed off so upstairs is a completely separate entity to down here. So we're going to do one of Pete's pocket doors in there. The toilet will be staying down here as well. There will be a toilet here as well as one upstairs. So we're going to raise this floor level up to this point, bring it out like I mentioned before to there all the way across. And then that will be a toilet and basin in there. So we are now back upstairs. and I can now show you what's going to happen up here. So there's going to be a kitchenette over here with storage space, which we'll sort out at a later date over there. So what we're going to do is build a dwarf stud wall here, about a metre high, across here, which will come to this point. And then that is going to basically add as a, a blockage for the edge of the units, which will sit across there. Here will be the shower room, so we're going to have a shower unit over here. Then there's going to be a basin there and toilet there. And then in here will be a bedroom. So that is, that is the plan. So Joe is just getting everything cut down there now. And then Pete is going to knock this up together here. Good morning guys and welcome to a marvellous Monday on site. Starting to get this floor down. We're going to get this wrapped up today in here. And then in here I've got to go and get some ply because this is going to be the bathroom area. So obviously there's going to be some ply sheets which will go down in here. And then we can get our tray in that corner over there. We've got a bit of stud work to build here. We've then got to carry all this on all the way up that wall. Get that all studded out nicely. That window is staying. We're not going over that. We need to frame around that, obviously. And then the rest of this wall needs to be all studded out as well. So this will be what we're going to be aiming at. All the chipboard floor is down. Next up, what we've got to do is get into the bathroom area and start getting this floor sorted in here. Hi, Pete. Morning, how are you doing, mate? All right, mate. Pete is just marking up now for where our lining is going to go and our architrave, so then that will define then when we set our stud wall across here. Obviously, we want to maximise the space that we've got in this bathroom area, so we need to make sure that our stud's as close as it can be to the architrave, but still enabling us to get a full width architrave around the door. So once that's set in, we can then start to cut this floor back to where it needs to be and then get our ply down in here. And then once that's all down, we get our stud across and we're flying. Do it.
you can see the framework now, how this is going to work. So obviously we've got stood work across here and returning there. Then there'll be a doorway through here where these steps are, our toilet here. And then we're going to have a shower across there. And then we're going to have potentially a built-in vanity unit across here uh, with a little bit of storage down the side there and obviously storage underneath the base will sit on top of that and just run through nicely with our sill there of the window. Joe is working away in here, getting all the patterns on the wall. We're gonna use our discs from Atlas just to level these walls out. So they can literally just be fixed to the walls, which is nice. And then we can level that all out with our insulated board. Jobs are good in. Morning guys, it's another cold day. It's very cold today, I had to defrost the van. There's fog. It's a typical British middle of January morning, whatever. I'm going to crack on in here, get this floor down, get the stud work sorted for the shower, whichever edge that may be. We're still up in the air a little bit about the layout of this room yet, so we can crack on with that. And then we're going to move down here and get the stud work sorted for the toilet that will be down here. So we've got the measurement exactly where our cistern is going to land from our waste, which is there. So we can set our stud work exactly where we need it to be. We're going to do it in six inch timber. So we can just drop a four inch soil pipe from the toilet up there, straight down through the stud work. And then we can tee into this because this floor is going to be raised up. So we can hide the pipe work underneath the floor and just drop that straight into there. So that's all concealed and you'll never know it's there. Uh, and then we can start to work under here as well. You can see the meshes there. We're going to mesh the underside of these stairs so they can all be wet plastered underneath just to give us our nice curve that we need and get all that sorted. That'll look nice. The hot water tank is going to go under the stairs here because this is all going to be electrically heated in here because we've got no gas. And to get the gas down to this building will be a lot of money, so it's more efficient to power it by electric. So yeah, we're going to have the tank under there as well. And then there will be a bit of a storage, so we've got to sort out where we're going to have doors, etc., on this little area here. But yeah, we've got plenty to crack on with today. I've got the piece of floor cut for here. This is the first bit that's gonna just drop in there nicely. It's a bit of an intricate piece, so I'm just gonna get it in and hope it fits first time. I'm sure it will. I've got no doubt in, my, in myself at all, honestly. Take, yes. Right, so I'm gonna get this whipped up now, get some glue on all the joists, get it screwed down, and I can get that last little bit cut in there, and then that is the floor in the bathroom completed. So I'm about to get the glue down. So we're using the Eggers stuff here. This is the joint adhesive, which is perfect for fitting flooring. It expands nicely, so it fills any gaps and make sure that we're nice and solid down to the joist. So basically when we put it on, we screw it down, it makes sure that there's no squeaking ever from this floor because it'll obviously expand if there are any undulations and stop any movement in the screws over time. One thing with this stuff though is if you've ever used it, you get it on your skin, it does not come off. You literally have to remove your skin to remove this stuff. So if you use it, any of these expanding glues, use some gloves protect yourself. You will definitely thank me later. So I've marked on all these joists exactly where my board ends. So I'm just going to run the glue up and down here now, get all that down, then I can get it, my lines on, get it screwed down and we're good to go. So I'm about to get my last piece in. I just thought I'd show you what I've done. Obviously you can see I've left a gap everywhere, all around these edges. There's a gap in here as well. And across here where the two boards meet. The reason we leave a gap is to allow for any expansion in these boards. Because if they're butted it tight and they expand, they kick these joints up. And then obviously if you've got tile above that, it's gonna cause cracking issues or movement. There's gonna be all sorts of problems. So whenever you lay and ply like this, obviously always glue it down, screw it down, and make sure you leave an expansion joint. We always do this, you'll have seen it on our previous videos. It's important to leave this gap just to save any future damage. So I'm just gonna get this last bit glued in now, get it all screwed down, and we're good in this room to continue. Pete has just turned up, hi Pete. 
Hi, John. You've sacked your driving instructor, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've him off, mate. We're going to get someone else. He's All basically... Right, it. it wasn't meant to be, was it? It wasn't meant it, to be. It's not you, it's him. That's it. We, just, we should just drive him for the people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Pete's going to get on to a new, a new relationship. That's it, you know what I mean? If there's any driving instructors out there that think they could handle Pete, then uh, That's it. comment below and he'll be in touch. That's it, Actually, mate. no, by the time you've seen this video, he will have passed. That's, That's it. your goals, Pete. That's it, too, right. <laughs> So, we are now down here on the toilet floor. It's not a place I like to be on the floors of toilets. I haven't been there for a while actually, so it's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> this is basically the line that we need to bring the inside of the stood work to, to allow us to fit our cistern directly to the wall without any additional work. So by the time we've got our stood work there, plus plasterboard and skim, that is gonna work out perfectly from the back of here, 250 mil to the back of the cistern. So that's bang on where we want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is get a load of plastic in here now, lapped up the walls. Get this leveled out here with some 4x2 just to bring us off the floor and above this and then put 6x2 over the top of that then so we can get our 4 inch pipe in like I mentioned earlier. So that is what I'm going to crack on with now. So guys, we are done for the day. We're smashing through it. Stood work's pretty much done down here. We've got a bit more to do here tomorrow, but run out of timber, so I'll pick some more up in the morning. Pete has smashed the stud work in up here. So this is all done now. You can see how this is all gonna look. Obviously we're gonna have a nice high ceiling in the stairwell, and this is all blanked off nicely through here. We're gonna have, I've mentioned before, a sliding door in here, like a barn door with a nice rail across the top. So this will just slide over to there so you can easily get in just to save space in the bathroom. We're gonna have our toilet here, basin there, shower over here. Peter's doing a lovely job of getting this all framed out nicely, ain't you Pete? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe smashing through with the battens on the walls as well. We've got our damp up there. Like we said before, we're gonna use these Atlas discs, which are basically a leveling disc that you screw through and then you use an Allen key to adjust the depth into the wall and then that basically levels the whole wall out. So we're gonna do that. So we'll get some vapor barrier over that and get those in. And then we can put our foil back insulation board on there. This room's done. We're not gonna do that wall yet. Because we're using those discs, what it's gonna do is actually stand off the wall by the time we've got our batten and our disc and then our insulated board, it's obviously going to affect where we're going to set our first batten. So we're going to get this wall and that wall done first and that frees up this wall then so we know where to set our first batten so we can get our fixings in. Because we're basically just going to be guessing we might end up too far away or too close so it's easier to do it this way. So that's why this has been left like this. So yeah, it's been a good day all in all. We will see you in the morning. Hello guys and welcome to another day in the coach house. The cold coach house, as you can see. Pretty chilly. My little heater is working well. There's Neil. All right, Neil. Neil is now in Team Coach House. He is starting to get all this insulated in here. So we've spoken with Building Control and they would like 100 mil of rigid insulation and then an additional 100 mil of our sound block insulation, which we are gonna put in there now. We're gonna get the rigid insulation there first. So when the first fix happens, we haven't then got to try and get around pipes cables, all that sort of thing. The rigid insulation is already in there and then the sparkers can easily just come below that and the plumbers as well come below that and come across. So it just makes it easier. It's a lot easier to cut the rock wall and get that around pipes and cables than it is with the rigid stuff. Because we all know the rigid insulation can be a bit of a pain, but you know, this is just the easiest way to get past that. I am going to carry on down here this morning. I'm going to get the rest of this stood work in here, get the door lining in there, and then I'm going to start getting this plasterer's lath under the stairs 
Uh, so that is ready for plastering. I don't want to do that too late because I want to make sure it's easy to get in there. Uh, up here, the guys are working away. Hi, Joe. Oh, yeah, mate. All right, mate. So Joe is carrying on with his battening work across here and in there as well. And then he's going to work his way into the bathroom. Uh, we've got some elements board to go on that wall and that wall there. We've also got a little bit of stud work to build, like we said before. So that one he's doing. And Pete. I didn't say hi Pete. Hi Pete! What? Hi Pete! Good morning! <laughs> Pete is going to carry on up here. So what we're going to do up here, we're going to box in this steel with our fire check board which is over there. And then we're going to build a frame which is going to sit, you can see where these laser lines are here. So our framework will sit across these sides here. We've just ripped down a load of 2x2 which is just laid up against the wall here. And then that was going to be fixed across here and then across this line as well. And then there'll be some timbers which will run across like this and form basically a ladder frame. So that will be then covered with insulated board. We're going to have insulated board which will come up here, across the flat and then back down. So when it's plastered, it can all roll, be rolled in nicely and have a nice rounded finish up there. So that will look nice and smart. Let's get on with it. Good morning guys, it's a new day on site and we've got a busy one. Looking smart, very nice indeed. So these are cut nicely at an angle rather than just putting it. My uh, impact a bit, it's very magnetic on the end. So it holds it like that. And then just as a demonstration, but look, you can see, it's strong enough. 